The Q3 numbers are in for Tesla. We've listened to the conference call. We're going to go all over that on today's video. We'll take a look at all the pertinent financial information for Tesla as well. And then we'll get over here and look at this for a stock chart perspective as this stock traded down over 5% in the after hours to a level of support that we've identified on this channel for nearly two years. Is this a wonderful buying opportunity for Tesla or is this start of a much longer and larger leg lower? We'll discuss all those things on today's show. What is going on investors? Hopefully you guys are doing well out there. Time to talk about Tesla. Q3 numbers came in year to date. This stock is down big, down 44%. That's outpacing the losses that we see with a lot of other stocks including the major markets like the S&P 500 and even the NASDAQ. Over the last year, this thing is still down 22%. You start stretching it out though, paints a glorious story, but we start to wonder with Tesla, are the best days behind this company? And not from a company perspective, not from a product perspective, not from an innovation perspective, but from a stock perspective, is the best days behind this? I tell you what, you got a $680 billion market cap on this one. We'll start to answer those questions as we walk through these Q3 results. Now, those Q3 results came in, revenues coming in at $21.45 billion. That was 55% growth. Both year over year did miss expectations by a little bit. You had those deliveries that couldn't get out to the customers toward the tail end of the quarter. You had earnings or those profits over at Tesla beating expectations a little bit. Those were negatively impacted by FX as well. Now, for the upcoming quarters, we've got Q4 coming up. Revenue estimates expected to be right around $26.7 billion. That would represent 50% growth year over year. I tell you what, heading out into the back half of next year. That's all we've got from an analyst perspective on Tesla. We're going to grow between on the low end, 35% on the high end, 68%. So we'll just squash one of the arguments. The fact that Tesla, yes, from a price to earnings perspective, from a price to sales perspective, certainly compared to traditional evaluations of a Ford and a GM, this company is wildly overvalued. But I, my counter argument with that is forget what Tesla does, forget what they sell, find me any company in the stock market that's growing between 35 and upwards of 68% over the next several quarters, find me one that's trading at a reasonable valuation and you will not find a stock. So this stock does earn its premium valuation as long as it can hit these revenue growth rates. When you look over on the earning side, paints a similar story. I mean, you have explosive earnings growth. And then when we come through these numbers and we see how wildly profitable this company is from an operating perspective, from a gross margin perspective, from a free cash flow perspective, things are looking very, very good. Now on that conference call, I did listen to the entire thing. I do have some summaries here from Twitter that make it easier for you to digest these things when it comes to this video. And it says, Elon Musk said, we're investing in everything possible to invest in that we can think of. And we're still still generating cash. So, and when we come over here and look at these financials, we'll see that operating expenses in the most recent quarter grew just 2% year over year. That's after you grew your revenues 55%. So you had 55% top line growth and you only grew your expenses, basically a negligible amount. That is incredible. And that's exactly what you want to invest in. If you're a company now, Elon Musk was on that call and he was pumping this stock. I don't know if he needs to sell a little bit more to close that Twitter deal or what he was doing, but man, he was pumping Tesla stock. And he said, uh, and I don't hear a lot of talk about this from most executives. That's what makes Elon Musk a relatively unique. Most of them say, well, it's an open and market and the market decides the value of his company. Elon Musk was very frank and he said that Tesla will likely be worth as much as Apple and Saudi Aramco, which are the two most valuable companies in the world. He thinks that Tesla will one day be worth more than both of those companies are worth combined. So that would be, I believe at the current valuation, maybe over $6 trillion. That would be nearly a 10 X from where Tesla is today. And I tell you what, if this stock 10 X, uh, yeah, we're, we're all going to be dancing. Everybody that owns some shares of Tesla. Now, Elon Musk said that they're tentatively aiming for 50,000 units of the Tesla semi by 2024. They're going to start deliveries uh, just north of me in Modesto, California at a Frito-Lay uh, Pepsi facility. They're going to do deliveries of the first trucks there. I think just a, uh, maybe a couple of weeks, maybe a month from now, Elon Musk, apparently on hand, if I'm 
I'm able to attend something like that, if the public can attend, I will try to be there, at least get a couple of photos, maybe try to sneak an Elon Musk autograph if I can do that. He's tentatively projecting 50,000 units. And for a lot of you out there, 50,000 units doesn't sound like a lot. But again, this is a product that costs, I think, in excess of $150,000. So 50,000 units times 150, 180, $200,000. We're talking about significant revenue. And that certainly is likely in some revenue estimates for this company, able to achieve 40, 50% growth on that revenue side towards the back half of next year. I think some of that is factoring in this semi growth, which again, not from a unit perspective, relatively small, but from a dollar perspective on each of those units, obviously very significant. Now, Tesla says that they are on track for 50% annual growth production this year and into, I think the term they use as far as they can see, they're going to grow this business 50% every year. Again, find me a stock anywhere. I don't care if they sell fertilizer or dog manure or grass or rope. I don't care what they sell. Maybe it's electric vehicles. If you can grow your business 50% year over year, you're going to get a premium price to sales multiple and you're going to get a premium price to earnings multiple. And I actually think this price to earnings and these price to sales over at Tesla actually starting to come in to where I don't think the market maybe is pricing in enough of this growth, believe it or not. And then finally, Elon Musk on buybacks, he says that the company has debated it on the board level and the board thinks it makes sense to actually do a share buyback, believe it or not. I mean, imagine. Imagine sitting here a year ago and saying, or even two years ago, and telling the bear case that Tesla was actually going to start buying back the stock within at 24 months. They would have been like, you're absolutely insane. Oh, well, here's the company maybe considering doing a five to $10 billion share buyback sometime next year. Again, on a 600, $700 billion company, depending on where this stock uh, trades tomorrow and over the next couple of days, uh, you know, five to $10 billion buyback's not huge. It will offset some of the executive companies compensation and employee compensation to a certain degree. But it's really interesting that this company is going to use the cash in that sense. Now, let's come over to the all important numbers over at this company. We talked about how the automotive revenue is coming in at 55% growth. And that's fantastic, right? Your total revenue growth coming in at 56%. Your total revenues include things like the solar and the energy and the service and the parts and all those types of things. So you had about $18.7 billion worth of just straight Teslas. And again, that's the highest number on record here. The $21 billion worth of total revenue, also a record for the company. I think the previous record was back here in Q1 at about $18.8 billion. The most impressive thing out of all of this, folks, is that they are achieving over 50% top line growth. In fact, over 55% top line growth on this company. And they grew their operating expenses by just 2%. Look at last year, you had $1.656 billion worth of operating expenses. This year, you had roughly $1.7 billion. In fact, sequentially, quarter over quarter, the operating expenses actually went down over at Tesla. You went from total revenues of $17 billion up to 21.4 and the operating expenses actually went down. And so there's certainly a tailwind with that. And obviously that's not, doesn't paint the full story. You get down to gross margins and those types of things. Your gross margins actually tick down by just one basis point quarter over quarter, because again, the input costs, the steel, the copper, the lithium, those are still at elevated prices, but they also talked about that extensively on the call. Everything other than lithium will likely be much, much lower heading into next year. So those gross margins probably have room to expand. And then when you have a company running this efficiently on the operating expense side. It's just a thing of beauty when it comes to things like that for shareholders. You come all the way down to free cash flow. They do have cash flows on this uh, statement. So we'll see that you had over 3.297, roughly $3.3 billion worth of positive cash flow in the most recent quarter. Last quarter, you had just $621 million. It looks like the record for cash flow was probably close to $2.8 billion. That was up 148% year over year. It's just really impressive what this company does from an operating and cash flow perspective. From the delivery numbers, these are widely known. These are reported uh, several weeks ago when the company kicks off every month. They give you an update on those deliveries. Total production up 54% year over year. Total deliveries up just 4 42% company talked about just a couple of weeks ago, the fact that they had produced enough cars that they kind of wanted to, but there was a supply shortage of actual transit trucks to get those from the 
manufacturing facilities out to the customers. So there was some challenges there that impacted the total number of deliveries, obviously impacted revenue to a certain degree. Solar deployed in the most recent quarter. We actually see that this business, uh, along with the charging business, actually operating profits at this point, uh, about 94 megawatts in the most recent quarter. That is down quarter over quarter, but it is up 13% year over year. The storage business is really where they're picking up a lot of speed here. That was up 62% year over year to 2.1 megawatt hours. You were at just 1.1 just a quarter ago, and you're at 1.3 about a year ago. Those supercharger stations, which I think is one of the ways you can create a moat around this business. Yes, Ford is making some really nice looking EVs if you can buy one. Same with all the car companies, Mercedes, Audi. They're all making nice ones if you can get your hands on them. But the challenge is, is where are you going to charge that thing? And the supercharger network over at Tesla certainly will integrate even into those models. We see here with the installed annual capacity, they talked very much about how Berlin is actually uh, ramping up very nicely. In fact, they did 2000 Model Y vehicles in a single week. That is in Germany. That was actually ahead of where Texas was. I was actually shocked by that. I thought that Berlin was going to trail Texas. No, it actually looks like Tesla... Texas Gigafactory is actually trailing Berlin, although they noted that in the most recent week, they reached 2,000 Model Ys in that Texas facility. By the end of the year, I think both those facilities, while they not be at full capacity, will have ramped up significantly. That Shanghai is looking like that thing could pump out maybe 800,000 to maybe upwards of a million cars, and they've ticked up the capacity out here in California, although they're running into probably a little bit of space and things like that. They talked about their full self-driving, which is obviously a very expensive ad on and they continue to roll that product out to more and more customers. They talked about how it will be maybe everybody that buys a full style driving software package with their Tesla will be able to at least experience that in some kind of beta. Much more energy storage deployed over the last quarter as the raw material cost and the supply chain difficulties start to ease. Obviously, this is a business that will be a beneficial for Tesla moving forward. They have plenty of cash, plenty of liquidity, plenty of cash flow. That's why they discussed uh, that buyback heading into next year. It is still, it's not an official buyback announcement, but they talked about how maybe five to $10 billion next year because they are investing in everything that they possibly need to, and they still have plenty of cash left over. These are their beautiful manufacturing facilities. Here's some more graphs that are going straight up. You can imagine this stock just continues to do that. Here's their operating margin. I thought on the right-hand side, I thought this was interesting. This is Tesla's operating margin. If you're not familiar with what operating margin is. It's basically your profit margin. And they show you here, this blue line is actually the average of the S&P 500. Looks like the average S&P 500 company is about 15% operating margin. Tesla's actually higher than that. I think it's like 17, 18%. And I talked about how you couple this with the fact that this company is growing at like a 50% clip on that revenue side. So they're growing faster than the average S&P 500. They are more profitable profitable than the average S&P 500. That is why this company has a massive valuation, at least from a traditional valuation metric. And then finally, you compare this to the auto industry, and it's much, much higher than the rest of that. They talked about how they need to start smoothing out their delivery patterns, how they kind of jam them all up into maybe a short period of time. They need to try to smooth that out. Certainly something into next year that you might get a little bit better read on. Here's the statement of operations, otherwise known as the profit and loss statement. Here's your revenue line coming in at $21.5 billion. Here's your cost of revenues here. The things that I want to point out here is you have your energy generation and storage business that came in north of a billion dollars, I believe for the first time. You had $1.1 billion worth of revenue there. Here's your generation storage cost right here that came in just south of a billion dollars. Okay, so it's not a mega high margin business. It looks like just rough math. You're looking at a 10% kind of gross margin on that. But in the past, the past several quarters, that actually has been a money losing business. So they're actually starting to generate money there. It is growing at a pretty rapid pace as well. So other parts of Tesla's businesses are starting to not only generate relatively significant revenues, okay, off of $21 billion worth of revenue, $1.1 billion coming to that energy and storage, but we're now starting to generate profits there as well. You had gross profit off this $21.5 billion worth of revenue. You had total cost of 16. So you take 21.5, you minus 16, and you get 5.3 or close to 5.4 
$4.4 billion worth of gross profit. Last quarter, you were at $4.2 billion worth of gross profit, and you were at $3.7 billion worth of gross profit a year ago. So you've gone from $3.7 billion worth of gross profit last year all the way up to 5.4. Just tremendous growth with this company. And if they can continue to grow their deliveries by 50%, introduce these new semi trucks that are very expensive and continue to see a decreasing of commodity prices and the raw materials that go into these cars and into these trucks. This company is very well positioned heading into next year. You get all the way down to a net income number of $3.3 billion last quarter. It was $2.3 billion. So you grew your net income by over a billion dollars, just quarter over quarter. You look into last year, you were right about $1.6 billion. You've doubled your earnings per share, roughly, not quite, but you basically doubled your earnings per share year over year with this company. It's just incredible. I, I uh, almost never see companies like this where they're not only doubling their revenues, doubling their net income, they're doing it profitably. They're doing it in a difficult environment. Obviously, Tesla has its detractors. There's some of you that are watching this that are more into traditional valuation metrics, kind of what I call finance 101 type metrics. But it doesn't matter what this company is selling. It doesn't matter what they are doing. They are doing it more profitably and they're doing it faster than the average company. That what make this a great investment. Now, it doesn't mean there is no risk with a Tesla investment. Obviously, these numbers start to slow down just a little bit for any different reason, well, obviously the company will start to look overvalued. We've seen that with Meta. We've seen that with Netflix. We've seen that with Amazon. We've seen that with a number of companies. Once that growth rate kind of pulls back and that valuation is still priced to perfection, well, the stock can pull back and there is some risk to that. But I am not really seeing a lot of evidence of that. And certainly from management speak on the conference call, I'm not seeing any evidence that this company is going to hit a wall from a growth perspective. Total assets on the company, they've got tons of cash. I mean, we're talking well over $21 billion. Last quarter, they were sitting right about $19 billion. A year ago, they were right about $16 billion worth of cash. They've added on over $5 billion worth of cash just over the last year. So yes, this company can comfortably buy back $5 to $10 billion worth of stock over the next 12 to 24 months and not impact the company uh, whatsoever. They have, I believe, no debt. Total liabilities on this company sit at just $33 billion. They have that sitting just in cash. They also have some inventory as well. If you factor cash and inventory, this company has their liabilities covered 100%. It, it, Tesla squashes so many of the bear case arguments that I think the bears are just simply getting stubborn at this point. Now, obviously we can discuss over the last year, the stock's down 23%. Year to date, it's not beating the S&P 500. It's not beating a lot of investments down 44%, but this is a volatile asset. It's been at times this year, 50% higher, maybe even higher than that, maybe close to 100% higher. So obviously a volatile asset at the current time down 44%, but there's been other times this year. Stock Stock's actually performed relatively well. Balance sheet looks absolutely gorgeous. Cash flow statement looks really, really strong as well. You had over $5.1 billion worth of positive cash flows at this company. Here's your stock-based compensation line. So this will give you an idea on stock-based compensation versus a $5 billion buyback. You see here over the last year, the company's kind of on a, we'll call it between a four and $500 million run rate per quarter when it comes to stock-based compensation. So you're roughly, we'll just round up up to like a $2 billion number. So yes, a five to $10 billion share buyback would actually reduce the number of shares outstanding at Tesla. It would more than offset the share-based compensation that this company has. So that would artificially boost your EPS with this company as well going forward as they reduce the number of shares if they decide to do that. Net cash used in investing activities, they spent just $1.8 billion worth of capital expenditures. That's about the run rate they've been on over the last four quarters, almost exactly $1.8 billion. $1.8 billion again this quarter. So they spent about 2.8 of this 5.1 billion on those investing activities. And then finally your financing activities, you bled through about 712 million. So if you take $5.1 billion of positive cash flow, minus off about 2.8 and another 712 million, you still generated positive cash of over $1.2 billion. That's where you saw that on the balance sheet quarter over quarter, you generated a significant amount of cash quarter over quarter and obviously year over year as well. And then finally, the most important number 
on Tesla's financial is down near down to the bottom of the document. It's in fact, one of the last numbers, it is automotive gross margins, excluding those regulatory credits. So Tesla gets a lot of money or not a lot of money in comparison. It was a year two, three years ago. Those automobile tax credits was a, basically all the profit and a significant portion of the revenue. Now it's essentially a rounding error. You see here, automotive vehicle gross margins coming in at 26.8%. Last quarter, they were at 26.2. They were higher a year ago. You were at 28.8% and they peaked in the first quarter. You had 30% gross margins anywhere in that mid 20s up into 30%, obviously in the challenging environment that we're in with the transportations, just delivering these cars, but obviously the raw materials as well. I think we got to give Tesla a pass on a couple of points. You also have FX impacting this for an exchange, certainly impacting those cars that are in China that are getting exported out into Europe. Just a beautiful set of financials here, but Wall Street didn't like it. Okay. In the after hours, the stock traded down by about 5%, although it just really got us back to a price that we were at with the stock literally just a couple of days ago. And those of you that follow the channel, we recap all the major news from all the major FANG stocks. We include Tesla in there as well. I'd love to see you guys on Friday every week on our Friday FANG stock show. If you're just interested in Tesla, there are timestamps. You can jump around to the Tesla news and the Tesla technicals. So look, we, we're still retesting the bottom of this uh, trading range that we've had marked out since December of 2020. It is creating a series of higher lows. That is a good thing, but it also creates some risk. If you dump the bottom of this, I think this stock could come down to $150, $160. That's where your next area of consolidation is. You see here, there's not much underneath the $210 range on this one. There's nothing really holding it back. It should be a magnet to this area of consolidation between, we'll call it $125 and $150 on this stock. So if you break through this level, that's where you're coming with Tesla. I would be really happy actually if that happens because we go through these financials. And again, I ignore, I don't care who's running this company. I don't care what they're selling. I don't care that I do own two Tesla cars and it's a very nice product. None of that matters. The thing that matters to me is the fact that this balance sheet on this company is crystal clean. They're creating very much increasing, like rapidly increasing cash flows. They're cr creating lots of wealth when it comes to their revenue growth. They have strong revenue growth. You got reinforced of that on the conference call today. They're introducing new products that are very expensive and are very much on the roadmap to be delivered just a couple of weeks from now. And now the company is talking about buying back the shares as well. I love what I'm seeing with Tesla. Is there risk with a stock like this? Absolutely. I've acquired a few shares at this 220 level because again, I don't need to remind anybody the equity market's obviously very volatile and on shaky footing. I think there's probably one more, at least one more leg lower, one more leg lower on the S&P 500 and Tesla is going to take a big dump with it. But my view on this company is we sit here a year from now, two years from now, and they still have a dominant position. They're still creating more and more cash flow. They're still generating more and more profits. And as those commodity prices start to come down, well, all of a sudden the gross margins will again start to tick back up into 20, 30, maybe even as high as 31, 32%. I love what I'm seeing over at Tesla. Put me in the fanboy camp. Put me in the cheerleader camp. I love stocks like this. This is not a stock for everybody. People that are trying to avoid risk, avoid volatility. Well, this stock is the definition of risk and volatility. But if you like risk and you like volatility, this stock is doing it from a positive cash flow, a positive earnings, positive operating margins, and they're doing it all and they're beating the S&P 500 across the board over the long run. This is the type of company that you want to invest in. And I believe while Elon Musk may be a little over exaggerating that it becomes more valuable than Saudi Aramco and Apple combined, this company is easily going to be worth $1 trillion, $2 trillion at some time. And today you're buying it at about a $680 billion market cap that doesn't include the 2.5% that it's shedding in the after hours. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Obviously we got lots more earnings heading into next week as well. Stay tuned to the channel, hit that subscribe button and that like button. I'd really appreciate it. See you again soon. Good luck with your investments.